My name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 206 in the series of basic math. Today we'll have our sixth lesson in the series of 15. Sixth lesson in the series of 15 on the topic of Venn diagram. As you can see, the problem for today is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. We are told that we have a group of 120 students. In a group of 120 students, we are told, 50 out of this 120 students study French, 60 of them study German, and 80 of them study Spanish. We are further told that there is no student, there is no student who studies two languages. Everybody studies either exactly one language or some study all three. Some study all three. But there is nobody here who studies exactly two languages. The question is very straightforward. The question simply is, how many study all three? What I would like you to do right now is to pause the video, solve the problem yourself, and once you have done so, then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds time, as we always do. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Okay, I'll get out of your way. Well, let's see what we can do. We are told that we have 50 people who study French. So here is 50 for French. We have 60 who study German. 60 who study German. So far so good. And we have 80 who study Spanish. 80 who study Spanish. Let's add them up, see what we get. We get a zero here. 6 plus uh, 8 is uh, 14. 14 plus 5 is nine, 19. We get 190. We're getting 190, but in reality we only have 120 students. 120 is the actual number of students. Actual number of students. Where is this discrepancy of 70? What does this discrepancy of 70 tell us? Now this is the part, what I'm about to tell you, this is the part if you have trouble understanding, that means that you have not watched the videos in, it, in, in, in its proper sequence. We learned the concept of double counting and triple counting and I'm going to tell you exactly when we learn it. Oh, actually, yesterday and day before yesterday. Watch, watch 205, watch 204 and 205. On day 204 and 205, we learned the concept of triple counting and double counting. What does the 70 tell us? This 70 indicates actually the number of people who have been triple counted. There are no double counting here. There is no double counting here. There is nobody here who has been counted twice. Why? Because there is nobody There is nobody who is taking exactly two languages. There are nobody. If we had some people who, who were studying two languages, then those people would have been double counted because they have been counted once as, as a student of one language and the same person would have been counted again in the other number as a student of second language. But there is nobody here studying two languages but we do have some people who are studying three languages. As we are told here clearly, some study all three, which is exactly why we have a discrepancy of 70. Question is, how many people are being triple counted? Think about it for a second. If we had one person, if we had one person who was taking French and German and Spanish, if you had one person who was taking French, German and Spanish, that one person would, would, will be counted in this 50 as a student of French, then the same one person would be counted again in this 60 as a student who studies German and the same that same one person would be counted the third time as a person who studies Spanish. There is your triple counted. And that person would be counted three times. But we only have one person. We have, we have only one person. We would have a discrepancy of two at the end if we only had one person studying three languages. If we had five people, if we had five people studying all three languages, then those five people will be counted one as people who study French, those same five people will be counted again as the people who study German, and then the same five people will be counted again for the third time as the people who study Spanish. Well, when we add them up, we get 15, but we only have five people actually. Five people are being counted as 15 people. If five people are being counted as 15 people, then there are only two possible explanations. One is that these people are taking all three languages or these people have multiple personalities. 
I'm being silly, you understand? As you can see, we have 5 people, therefore we'll have a discrepancy of 10. We will have a discrepancy of 10 because 5 are being counted as 15. If we had 10 people taking all 3 languages, then 10 people will be counted as people who are taking French, people who are taking German, people who are taking Spanish, they'll be counted as 30 people. At the end, you will find a discrepancy of 20. If we had 35 people, if we had 35 people taking all three languages, then those 35 people would be counted first as the stood people who are taking French, those 35 people would be counted again as the people who are taking German, and again the same 35 people would be counted for the third time as the people who are taking Spanish. This is what we'll have on our hand, and as a result, and as a result, having counted 35 people three times instead of just counting them once, having counted 35 people uh, three times, having done triple counting, you will find that at the end you will have a discrepancy of 70. You will have a surplus. You will have a 70 too many. You will have 70 too many right here. That 70 tells us that we are counting 35 people three times, which is why we have a discrepancy of 70. That 70 tells us that. 35 people, 35 are taking, are taking all three languages. 35 people are taking all three languages. That's it, we're done. As far as the problem is concerned, as far as the problem is concerned, had this problem appeared in the exam, whether you're taking S, preparing for SAT, SAT, GMAT, or GRE, something like this not, will, will not appear in the T's, but it would appear, it is a good candidate for SAT, SAT, GRE, or GMAT, if this problem appeared on the exam and the, and the question is simply asking you how many, how many are taking all three, that's it, we're done. The answer is 35. 35 people are taking all three. But we're going to go a couple of, step, couple, of, couple of steps further just for learning purposes, purely for learning purposes, and we're going to present this information in the form of a Venn diagram. Because who knows, maybe it's part of the problem might be represented in the form of a Venn diagram. Let's see. So here is, the, here is our French, here is our German, and here is our Spanish. Okay, stay with me in the story. It's very important that we pay attention. We have 50 people who are studying French, 60 people who are studying German, 80 who are studying Spanish. That's this information right here. It adds up to 190. When we subtract 120 from it, we have a surplus of 70. This work that you see here, we do have to do this work in order to go to the next step of showing it in a Venn diagram. From there we infer that we have 35 people who are studying all three languages. There must be 35 people who are counted as 35 times 3 which is why we have a surplus of 70. Do you understand? That 35 because they are studying all three languages will appear in the common area. Right here, 35. As soon as we insert the 35 in that area, as soon as we insert the 35 in that area, we have to go back and adjust the figures. This 50, after you subtract 35 from here with 15, because this 50 contains these 35 people. These 35 people came from this 50. 50. 50 people study French, and of those 50 people who study French, 35 also study German and Spanish. So 50 becomes 15, and that 15 tells us that there are 15 people who study only French. And then we subtract 35 from here, it becomes 25. And that 25 tells us that out of the 60 people who study German, 25 study only German and nothing else. Only German and nothing else. The remaining 35 people who study German also study French and Spanish. Similarly, we have to go back and adjust this figure. Subtract 35 from it. 80 plus 30 would have been 50, so it's 45. And that tells us that 45 people study. Of the 80 people who study Spanish, 30, 45 people study only Spanish. The remaining 35 people who study Spanish also study French and German. Now you will see that if you add up these four figures, these four figures, you will see that it does add up to 120. 15 plus 25, 15 plus 25, let's do it here, 15 plus 25 plus 45, and then this 35 right here, this 35 which appears in the common part, if you add up all of these, so this 15 represents only people who study only French, people who study only German, people who study only Spanish, this 35 represents people who study all three. And now if you add up the figures, you will see that this does add up to the number of people that we have in the group. It will, because nobody is double counted, nobody is triple counted. The count counting is done properly. 5 plus 5 plus 5, that's 20, that's 2, 
2 plus 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, 8 plus 1 is 9, 9 plus 3 is 12. Voila. That's it. That's all there is. The question is, the question is, what would you do if you had to represent the same information? What, if you, what would you do if you had to solve this problem, same problem, algebraically? If somebody were to ask you to show the solution to this problem, same exact problem, nothing has changed, same exact problem. The question simply is, how many of them are studying all three, solve the problem algebraically? What would you do then? What I'm debating right now is, should I go there right now or should I save it for the next video? Let's do it right now. Let's do it right now. Now, I'm going to show you now. Now, we will learn how to solve this problem algebraically. Are you up for it? Let's do it together. That's it. As far as the problem is concerned, we are done. This is your Venn diagram. I'm going to erase all of this information so that we can have the room because I don't want to erase anything else. Let's erase. Remember, there is nobody, there is nobody who studies two languages and there are some who study all three. You have to remember that part. And this part, of course, is very easy because right here, 50, 60, and 80, 50, 60, and 80. Oh, some people study all three, we are told. Some people study all three because we see a number here. Nobody studies two languages because these are blank. Let's do it here. And we have a total of 120, which is right here. We don't have to memorize it. We don't have to remember it, is what I meant to say. Well, what does this 190 represent? This 190 that we see here, this 50 plus 60 plus 80, this 190 that we see here, what do you suppose it represents? It represents the number of people who are studying only one languages, then it represents the number of people who study two languages, who by the way have been counted twice, they have been double counted. Of course, given the, uh, leave it aside for the time being, then in this problem we don't have that complication. There is nobody who is studying two languages in this problem, but had we, if we had somebody who was, who were who was or who, who were studying two languages, we would have double counted those people. And this number also involves the number of people who are taking all three languages who have been triple counted. We, we're going to do the problem algebraically, so of course we need to, we, we need to define our variables. Let, we're going to define our variable. Let x be the number of people, the number of people who are studying exactly, exactly one language, exactly one language, number of people who are studying exactly one language. That's our x, remember it, okay, I'm going to raise now, okay, x going to be the, the number of people who are taking exactly one language. Let y let y be the number of people who are studying exactly exactly two languages and finally let z let z be the number of people who are studying exactly three languages are you with me so far so good very good job now this 190 this 190 has to equal, this 190 has to equal the number of people who are studying exactly one language plus the number of people who are studying two languages who have been double counted. Because they have been double counted, we have to do two times y. That's what this 190 represents. That's why it's, that's why this number is higher than the actual number of people. It also, also includes the number of people who have been triple counted. Let's represent with the letter z we said. And they have been triple counted. So it's three times z. There is your first equation. Right here is your first equation. 190 is this quantity right here. But we know that the actual number of people we have is 120. The actual number of people we have is 120, which is the people who are studying exactly one language plus the people who are studying exactly one, uh, two languages and people who are studying exactly three languages. People who are studying exactly two languages, people who are studying exactly three languages, and people who are studying exactly one language. In this scenario, we're not double counting anybody because we're defining this variable as people who are studying exactly one language, two, one language, two languages, three languages. And if you add them up, that should add up to 120. You see, people who are studying one language, one language, which in this case is 15, 25, and 45, 15, 25, and 45. We have nobody who's studying two languages. These, th these numbers are zero. There is nothing here. There is nothing here. There is nothing here. Our y is zero. There is nobody studying two languages. And then we have 35, which is our z. 
But of course we do not know that it's 35, that's the whole point, we are solving for z, you understand? This, this is from the previous solution, this is the algebraic solution. That's it. Now we know that y is equal to 0. Y is equal to 0. Why? Because we are told that. We are told that nobody is studying, nobody is studying two languages. So let's, let's rewrite our equation with y being equal to 0. So we have first, first equation which is going to be x plus 3z equals 190 because y is equal to 0. Our second language is going to be x plus z equals 120. Now remember, we are interested in solving for z. Or if you are interested in solving for z, then just subtract second equation from the first equation. This is a positive sign, we're going to subtract it, so let's make it negative. This is a positive, it becomes negative. This is positive, it becomes negative. We are almost done. x and x will cancel out. We'll have 3z minus a z. 3z minus a z is 2z. 190 minus a 120 is 70. And what do you know? That's your 70 right there, which is why we had a surplus, because they were triple counted. And therefore z, which is the number of people who are studying exactly three languages, is 35. Well, that's it. That's my z. That's, that's not a very, very healthy z, but it's a z. Do you understand? Or if it pleases you, use z. That's it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.